Remember, you just don't meet people and say, hey, I'm trying to get a job, you work here, what's up? No, that's not how it works. But Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are a new subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing. And if you're not, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. My name is Annette. I release videos twice a week and I cover a wide variety of topics. So today we're going to be talking about how to master the art of networking. Networking is something that comes very easy to some people while other people, like me, struggle with networking. It's because networking is not as easy as people say it is and you may not realize the full value or potential value of an individual when you meet them to know that it's time for you to exercise those networking muscles. So how do you figure it out? How can you tell whether or not this person is a viable contact that you should have and network with? How do you know which events to attend when you're trying to network? How do you know how to network within your network in a way that you can maximize the people you know? All that and more we'll be talking about in this video. So grab yourself a cup of coffee. I do have a cup of coffee here. And I will go ahead and get started shortly. First thing to do while you're trying to maximize the effect of networking is to network among your network. What do I mean? Basically, think of all the people you went to school with, people you went to college with, people you went to law school with, or business school, or med school, people you've met previously at professional events and you've built some sort of relationship with them. They are the front runners of your networking group, if you will. Those people know other people. Those people may be strategically placed in situations that will be beneficial to you. If you're trying to get an end goal, if it means trying to get a new job or just trying to be more out there in the professional scene, whatever it is your goal is, when you're trying to network, your very first step should be amongst the people that you already know. There's a saying that goes like, I think it's, your network, your network is your network, oh my gosh. Your net worth is your network. Yeah. While that may be very shallow, there's a lot of truth in it. It's all about who you know. For example, the guest commencement speaker in the graduation ceremony the year before I graduated law school was Curry Booker. Curry Booker is the senator of New Jersey and back then he was a mayor of Newark, New Jersey. Now, of course, being that he was a high profile politician at the time, he wasn't easy to access and he's not, it's not easy to get someone like that to, you know, come and be the commencement speaker for your school. But one of the deans in my law school at that time went to law school with him. They were buddies. They were members of the Black Law Students Association at Yale. So by virtue of that, she was able to reach out to him and basically asked, amongst other things, for a favor to be the commencement speaker at the law school at that time. And that's how that happened. In the same light, I have been in situations where, by virtue of my positions at a firm, a friend of mine who I went to law school with, or who I worked with at some point, or who I, you know, met at a professional organization, reached out to me and asked if I could put in a good word for them. And by virtue of me doing that, I was able to get them a job. In the same light, I've had a situation where my very first job out of law school was through a friend of mine who knew someone. So again, it's best to bank on the people that you know because they are the first point of contact. As opposed to going into a networking event where you don't know anyone and you're just trying to figure out how you can work your way, build relationships and figure out the best way to communicate with people, the best thing to do is to take a step back, figure out who you know, figure out their positions, figure out how they can help you achieve your overall goal and then strategically map out a plan to reach out to them. Be it via email, be it via LinkedIn, you know, you just keep going. I mean, I actually have also gotten business on my own and business that I've passed on to the firm that I'm associated with now currently by virtue of people that I went to law school with. I've also gotten businesses by virtue of my communication with people that I met at networking events and then they reached out to me personally. So again, network within your network is very important. The second tip I'll be sharing with you today is for you to maximize your relationships. Yes, you know this person, you met XYZ individual at a professional conference and you guys have added each other on Facebook or LinkedIn and you've been sending each other maybe messages, happy birthday or congratulatory messages. I think it's best for you to maximize in those relationships. If ever they're in town, ask them, hey, can we get together, let's discuss, or ask them how work is going with them. Ask them what the next step in their career is. Ask them if there's any way you can help. Like, offer your services. Put yourself out there. Let them know that you're not just a contact that you made in passing. Build a relationship with these individuals that way, down the line, if you need a favor, or you don't even need a favor, if you just need a referral or, you know, just to be able to be comfortable with certain groups of people, 
that you've met and they're high caliber and they're high up in the professional sphere, it's best to maximize your relationship. You just don't meet someone once and be like, oh, I met this person at a conference, he's very great, but we haven't spoken in eight years. Well, if he or she is the CEO of Coca-Cola, or he or she is the CFO of you know, Reebok, and you guys met at a random event, that person is someone you need to know. Even if Coca-Cola or Reebok or any of these companies are not within your radar, that's a relationship you need to build. That's a connection you need to hone in on. So go out of your way and make sure you build those relationships and you establish friendships to the point where networking then becomes easy. Remember, you just don't meet people and say, hey, I'm trying to get a job, you work here, what's up? No, that's not how it works. But by the time you build relationships to the point that you and the person are comfortable, if a situation ever presents where you know that you're either looking for a job at that company or they're friends with an individual at a company with whom you have a relationship or you're trying to build a relationship with that individual, then you can use that contact as a way to leverage your relationship. So be sure to maximize your networking contact. In the same light, whenever you go to a professional event and you meet someone new, you haven't heard about this person before, you guys had a connection, they seemed very interesting and you guys have a lot of things in common, follow up on those contacts. Send a follow up email. It was great meeting you. I hope to see you at the next professional event or if there's another professional event coming up and you forgot to send a follow up email, send another email and say, hey, by the way, it was great seeing you at the last event and I figured this event's coming up. You probably will be there. Will I be seeing you there? Are you going to be there? Things like that will not only solidify the relationship you have with people in your network, it will also help you build relationships with individuals you just met. Again, you don't just meet someone with whom you have a great connection and with whom you think you can build a business or a solid practice or just a relationship with and just limit all of that to that first time interaction. That's not how it works in the business world. In the business world, of course, your credentials help. But I am learning more now than ever that who you know actually is almost as important as what you do. So take a step back to let that marinate. You could be on top of your game, you'd have your MBA, you've gone to an Ivy League school and have all your docs in row and just be an overall great individual. But if you don't have any connections and you don't know how to work those connections, you might end up being stuck because at this day and age, it's no longer just about what you're capable of and what you have in your resume. It's also who you know and how you can work those connections. So maximize those relationships and follow up with your contact. Another way you can effectively network is if you increase your visibility among social media platforms that are geared towards networking and professional development. Just for example, if you have a LinkedIn profile and you're trying to to be more um, involved in the... I keep using the legal community because that's my community, but I will try to use other examples that may be appropriate. So for example, if you're trying to be more visible in the accounting community, I would recommend you join groups and organizations within LinkedIn that get together and then they either share articles amongst themselves and be a part of that organization. Send articles, comment on articles, add individuals with whom you're interacting with on social media, add them as a friend, check out their profile, like, comment, engage in discussions with these people because what's going to happen is the more you engage in discussions with these people online, the more your page becomes visible not just to them but to other people who are not only like-minded as you are, but also maybe in a situation where they can help you level up, where they can help you move up and move forward. So consider doing that. Another way to increase your visibility on LinkedIn is also by just writing articles. You don't have to have an editor-in-chief review your work. If you're confident in your article and you know that you do have an audience and you have one or two friends or a couple of people who will appreciate that article, then go ahead and write the article and then tag the groups. That way people can see you and you'll be on their radar. They probably will Google you and then if there's a job opening, you might come to mind when they're looking for someone. Or even if there's not a job opening, if you're looking for business opportunity, if you're looking for a referral, if you're looking for expertise, you can be the prime candidate they will approach just because you've made yourself visible to people that you otherwise won't have A, met or B, interacted with. So be sure to increase your social media visibility if you're trying to maximize the effect of your network and everything. The next tip for you is a no-brainer, attend networking events. I can't tell you how important networking events have been to me, especially within the very first five years of my legal career. At this point, I'm approaching the seventh year of being an attorney and I will tell you that a lot of valuable lessons that I learned in the very first three to five years, I learned from networking events. 
I was a member, and I'm still a member of a lot of networking groups like the Association of Black Women Attorneys, the Metropolitan Black Bar Association, New York State Bar Association as well. So by virtue of my membership in those um, organizations, I have met amazing people. I have learned so much about a legal career because they have panels comprised of amazing people, amazing trailblazers who talk about the experience, who talk about the milestones, who talk about the workplace interactions that you actually have been going through but you thought some way somehow in your little head that's what I thought that it was only happening to me I thought the way things were happening the way my career was unfolding was just because of me I thought the workplace interactions I was having was just me I had no idea that people actually experienced the same thing I just thought it was me I thought there was something I was doing wrong and going to professional events actually helps not just expand your way of thinking it gives you a feeling of community it gives you a feeling of belonging where you know that okay I'm with people who we struggle together we struggle to pass the bar exam together we struggle to navigate the craziness of the legal profession together while trying to be on top of our game and stylish and you know managing our family and our career and the demands that we put on ourselves and the demands that are placed upon us and navigating whether or not you know you want to go to a big firm a lot or small firm or work in the government or go in-house all these concerns are shared with people in community and networking events and when you go there, you meet people and you create relationships with people that last a very long time. Actually, one of my really good friends, she was one of my bridesmaids as well, hey Jamer, we met at a professional networking event. I walked in, she walked in behind me, we were placed on the same table and, and we didn't speak the whole time because I didn't know her, she didn't know me, we we're both young lawyers seeking out the same thing and they gave us a plate, I think it was the time we got appetizers and it was a plate of salad with like three thick bacon slices and we said something to each other about the food and we started laughing and we cracked up and we're fast friends, <laughs> we're fast friends, we've been friends and this is probably about what, three, four years ago? And not only has she referred some work to me, I've also helped her, you know, with regard to, to questions on a professional and a personal level. You know, I was there when she was engaged. I spent time with her overseas and she was one of my bridesmaids at my wedding. My family members know her. Her husband and my husband have a good relationship. So it's one of those things where until you go for professional events and networking events, you have no idea how many people out there not only look and think like you, but they're going through the same thing as you are and they have that one desire, that longing to be a part of the community and you never know who they know, how they interact with other people and how they can help you and you can help them as well because it's not just you, 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 you're also helping other people. So be sure to seek out opportunity that lets you um, attend networking events and to the extent that they require like a ticket fee or something, if you go ahead and pay for it by yourself, be sure to include that in your taxes so you can get that as a tax write-off or ask your boss if it's something that the, your company can compensate you on. Most companies, to the extent they're, you know, they're not like really small mom and pop shops, will be excited that you're actually going to networking events to either bring business or increase visibility for the company and also meet more people and just become more well-rounded. It shows initiative, it shows a desire to help and to be part of something bigger than just yourself. In the same light of attending a networking event, networking events are also very gruesome because if you don't know anyone there, huh, it's nerve-wracking, you feel awkward, you're alone, and then actually some predators that go there, some guys go there to pick up young innocent girls who are looking for I don't know, career development or just a mentor. So what do you do in situations like that? Find yourself a networking buddy. Ask your friends, hey girl, what are you doing this Friday? There's this event, I'd like to go, can you go with me? It's just two hours. There are drinks or, you know, there's a free credit, continuing legal education credit or whatever continuing education credit that's applicable to your situation. Let them know that it's something that is both beneficial because had they gone on their own, chances are, they may not actually be around people that they know. So they have to have interactions with other people. Now, if you're there with them, then you guys can interact with each other. And then you don't have to feel as awkward. You're not going to feel uncomfortable. You're not going to be worried about, oh, people looking at you or you being a prey by virtue of you just being there by yourself. You have a buddy who you can talk to. You have a buddy with whom you can steer conversations amongst other people. And then halfway through the networking event, if you guys part ways individually, you can always come back 
and say, oh, this night was a great night or this night sucked, nothing happened. But either way, you got out of your house, you met people, you spoke with other people, and you exercised your networking muscle. Networking is something that doesn't come easy for everyone, so that's why it's something you have to keep trying. It's a muscle you have to keep working on, you have to keep exercising, you have to keep going for networking events, knowing how to sell yourself, knowing how to be helpful to other people, knowing how to present yourself. And when all that comes together in a package, you're able to navigate through networking events better and you're able to navigate through networking events better when you have a buddy by your side. The last tip that I will give you guys today with regard to maximizing the effect of networking is to use your mentor. I'm assuming you have a mentor. If you don't have a mentor, go ahead and find yourself one and then when you need information or you need just help and advice with regard to your career progression or your next steps, ask your mentor and then you can ask your mentor if he or she knows anyone in XYZ profession or XYZ company if you're trying to you know get the business from that company or if you're trying to gain employment in that company you'll be surprised who they know while this is part of networking within your network it's a specific type of networking because you have to do your research first and know that okay this is what my end goal is and my mentor has to connect with this person so I have to work my mentor to get that information and to get the connection that I'm seeking so when you use all these seven different methods and tips that I shared with you guys to navigate through the craziness of networking, I do believe that you will be successful and you will achieve your goals, whatever they are, and you'll be better and more well-rounded with regard to networking. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was able to provide value to you to the extent that you're trying to deal with networking. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you're not, and if you are, I do appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.